Ordinary people can become extraordinary, right? You don't have to be David Goggins. You don't have to be Tony Robbins. You don't have to be Michael Jordan. I struggle just like you. Hey, it's Ian Koniak, and today I'm going to give you inspiration for normal, average people and share five ways that average people can become absolutely extraordinary. I say average. None of us are average. We're all fucking awesome. I want to be very clear. But what I mean is when you are watching somebody on TV that's a superhuman, think of a Michael Jordan or maybe an Elon Musk who's achieving these crazy feats, or I'm listening to a book, an audio book right now from David Goggins, Can't Hurt Me, and he has some superhuman feats that he's doing. A lot of times it's like, oh, I can't do that. I'm an ordinary person. I'm normal. Or maybe I don't want to do that. I don't want to be a billionaire. I don't want to go and run ultra marathons or, you know, put in the sacrifices to get to that level. And if you're thinking that, then this video is for you because that is me. I'm a very ordinary person, but I've been able to get some pretty extraordinary results by a few things that I do consistently, which have led me to success in sales. I was the former number one enterprise AE at salesforce.com and to success as an entrepreneur. Our company in its second year will be an Inc. 5000 company. That means the 5,000 fastest growing small businesses will do over 2 million this year. So what the heck am I doing and who am I? And to give you a little bit of context, I am somebody that went to lunch today and got on my phone, got on Instagram, was scrolling YouTube, and didn't want to fucking go to work. Didn't want to go make this video or create content or go plan my week, and my day. I have these struggles every day. Okay. Every day I struggle with motivation or with discipline. But I'm able to overcome those struggles by doing a few things which have led to a lot of success. And so let's go over what these things are. Five tips for success. And again, if I can do it, you can do it. One more thing about me. I've struggled with addiction my whole life. I have ADHD where I used to rely on my medication. I don't anymore. Okay. And I've been able to overcome a lot of hardship. I lost my dad at a pretty young age. I almost lost my family to addiction. I misquoted three years in a row. You name it, I've struggled with it. But I've been able to rise above all this circumstance. And now I'm in a place where I do have a lot of success um, with family and with financial success and with my business. So let's talk about it. Okay. If I can do it, you can do it. So tip number one, always work on yourself. Always work on yourself. The one thing that I've been committed to is working on myself in the areas I need help. So I first started personal development journey seven years ago in 2017. It was my first year personal development. I didn't do well in sales, missed quota three years in a row. And I said, you know what? I need to get better and I'm committed to getting better. Okay. And that's never stopped. The past seven years, I've been continuously working on myself. The addiction stuff, I got into recovery. Marriage stuff, I got a, a therapist to help. Um, business stuff, I joined a mastermind and worked with some great mentors and got a lot of, got a lot of help. Um, so that's number two is getting help. So I'm committed to working on myself continuously and being aware of where I struggle. And then I find resources and people in groups that can actually help me because clearly I can't fucking do it alone. Okay. Part of my language. I don't know why, but it, it's like, if I try and do it alone, I fail. But when I get help, and when I stay humble and when I work on myself, I, I succeed. So, um, I just started working with a, I have a spiritual coach because for me, I know my spirituality is important, but a lot of times my ambition gets in the way and my faith doesn't take a front seat. So I actually have a spiritual coach that forces me to have space and time to work on becoming a more spiritual person. Um, physically, I, you know, I ran two marathons last year and I, um, my wife didn't like the way my body looked. She said I was too lean. So she actually said, Ian, I want you to get in shape. And I'm like, well, I don't really like working out on my own. So I went and hired a trainer, a 
personal trainer. I meet with him three days a week. I hate it. He kicks my ass. It's all calisthenics body training. But look what's happening. That is happening. In three months, I now have a six pack from when I was last time I had that. I was 20. I'm 44 years old right now. Again, I don't say this to show off. I say it because I get help from people who know better than I do. That's number two. So work on yourself. Be committed to always working on yourself. Number two, get help. Okay. Another thing that I do constantly is I'm never happy with where I'm at. I definitely enjoy the journey, but if I get too comfortable, if I get too complacent, it just feels really crappy. So I'm always keeping myself kind of uncomfortable. And the way I do that is I continually set ambitious goals for myself and continually create a vision that inspires me to work really hard and to challenge myself. So again, the working out is a is an example of that in terms of what I want to look like. But in my business, I'm constantly expanding my vision for what I want. Because once you achieve your goals and you get there, it's like, okay, great. I did it. Do I stop here? Hell no. Right? So for me, I reset my vision at least twice a year. I'm always resetting my vision to make sure that I'm um, aiming for what I want next. So I know what I'm working towards. Cause the minute you don't know what you're working towards, it's very hard to get the motivation to um, keep going. So for me, again, it's constantly evaluating what is it that I want and why am I working so hard? And if it doesn't like really ignite the fire within, I, I stay there until I find a vision that actually fuels my fire. And that's what I'm doing right now with my business. I got to 2 million. That was exciting. But now it's like, well, how do I build a, true program that can help make every salesperson who joins my program absolutely wildly successful, right? And and really make that into a repeatable process that people can go through. In order for me to do that now, I'm actually bringing in outside help. I'm hiring coaches. I'm having other people build upon and add to my course. So that's a super exciting vision that's, you know, requiring me to now change what I'm doing. So I'm always kind of like expanding upon what I want right? Um, and, and resetting that vision. That's number three. Um, number four is once I have the vision, I build a plan. I build a plan. Okay. And I say, okay, what are the things that if I'm going to hit this vision that I'm going to need to do in order to achieve that? And also who do I need to be in order to, to achieve that? So again, if I have a vision of building a scalable business that can change the world of sales, right? What am I doing? I'm finding other coaches. I'm finding the content. I just got off the phone with a guy who is in my program, who's a chat GPT wizard. And he's going to show how you can use AI and sales to really make your life a lot easier and improve your, um, your, your meeting, your booking meetings and, and, um, using AI to like do research around a company. So you don't have to comb through 10 Ks and then tying it back to what you do. A lot of that I teach in my program and I do it manually. He's going to show me how AI can help that. That's not something I know much about, but I want to bring in the right people to do that. So that is the plan. It's like, okay, find the experts, bring them in. And when you know what your vision is, a lot of times these things kind of happen. The universe conspires. God conspires to help you achieve that vision. But it all starts with having a powerful vision. And then the mechanics of the how start to reveal themselves. But it all starts with vision. So the four is is building a plan, having a plan in place that you can follow. Okay. And again, planning is where many people fall, fall short. That's number four. And number five is I show up when I don't feel like it. I re referenced earlier, I was on the couch and I was watching some videos from David Goggins and you know, he's just busting his ass and pushing past the limit where you literally, he was training someone who was throwing up. He was throwing up as he was training. He was like, get back up. And I'm not gonna do that. I don't wanna train till I throw up. I have no desire to do that. But what I do is I actually get up quickly. So. I was on the couch. Normally I take an hour lunch every day to like break up the day, reset. Um, I was on the couch and maybe it was like an hour and a half after lunch. I stayed an extra half hour and was just kind of scrolling and didn't want to get back up to go to work. I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate. I go through that too. It's not like I'm like, yay, work every day. No, hell no. Right. But what I do differently is I show up every day and when I, 
fall or when I'm kind of like out of motion, I get back into motion really quickly. I get up quickly after I fall or when I'm, you know, I don't stay down too long, I guess is the, is the word. So do I work a full day? Here's another thing. Like most um, entrepreneurs or solopreneurs that work long hours, right? Startup founders that work in like 80 hours a week. I don't do that. I work like 40, maximum 45 hours a week. But when I'm working, I'm really working. Uh, I don't mess around too much during the day. I, I, I'm very clear on what needs to be done because I have the plan and I don't spend too much time between meetings, getting started, just like getting myself. I try to get into motion pretty quickly. I'm making this video. It's about three o'clock on a Friday. Many people will check out 3, 3.30 on a Friday. I'm working until 5, 5.30 every Friday. So it's that consistency. So showing up every day, being consistent with your work and getting up quickly when you fall down. I guess that's all packaged into one, which is number five, but really it's three separate things, right? Show up every day, right? Be consistent and get up quickly when you're out of momentum, when you're not feeling it. And those days turn into weeks. Those weeks turn into months and the months turn into years. And over seven years now, again, I've been able to really just achieve all the dreams I could think of. I really have. Um, and, and again, I don't say that to brag. I say that to inspire you because I, I'm a normal freaking dude with normal insecurities, imposter syndrome, addiction, um, laziness, vices, all the shit. But I kind of force myself by putting myself in situations, by setting these big goals and by getting the help and by surrounding myself with like really solid people that are really challenging me to like my coach, right? My trainer, my spiritual coach, my community. Um, I mentor people too, because I mentor people. I do it mainly for myself because it forces me to like drink my own champagne and walk the walk, right? So again, I share this because when you do this, you can have your life, your dreams. I mean, this is a, this is where I hang out with my family in our backyard. I have a back office where I work out of and, um, life is freaking good, man. Life is good. So Ordinary people can become extraordinary, right? You don't have to be David Goggins. You don't have to be Tony Robbins. You don't have to be Michael Jordan. I struggle just like you every single day, but I've been able to create this dream life, dream life from doing the things I just, just showed you, working really, really hard. Again, behind me, we just bought a new car for my wife. I paid cash for this car. I wrote a check for $90,000 so I don't have payments on it. I don't know if you can see it, but it's really freaking nice. And I'm stoked. I'm stoked about it because of being able to do that, see the smile on my wife's face, to be able to pay cash, not have payments. All this is possible through doing the things that I'm sharing with you. So my main message is if I can do it, you can do it too. You just got to show up. You got to know what you want. You got to have a plan. You got to always work on yourself. You got to get the help you need. Don't go at it alone. You need help rocking sales. You need help becoming the best, man. Just reach out to me. I got a program to help you regardless of where you're at. So I'll see you next week.